<laughs> no whining. Only expert guests and seasoned opinions. Instruction that matters. At the controls, Vincent Finelli and Mark Wright. And we're back on USA Prepares, the radio program. I'm Mark Wright, and I'm here with the original survival economist, Vincent Finelli. And Vincent, uh, we have a guest waiting for us on the line by the name of Mike Maul. This man is a bona fide defense expert, and I'm really excited about talking with him today. Why don't you introduce him to our audience? Love to, Mark. Um, Mike Ma is an author. He's written a couple books, and one of them is called Mike's World, Live It. Another one is called Mike's World, Book of Life. Mike Ma, Mark, and I are friends. Mike is a Get Prepared Expo instructor here in downtown Springfield, and he will be giving two of his famous seminars at the September 9th and 10th Expo in downtown Springfield. Tickets are available at usaprepares.com. They're $9, usaprepares.com. Mike has been involved in every imaginable kind of trouble. He's been involved in shootouts. Um, He's trained SWAT teams. He's started his own uh, oil drilling company. He's foiled an attempt for a family kidnapping. He's been in financial issues. It just goes on and on. Class, I'd like to welcome Mike Ma. Hello. Hey, Thanks Mike. for having me. <laughs> Mike, can you speak up just a little bit? Okay, well, that's about as all I can talk. You have to turn <laughs> your side up. Uh, we, we did. You're fine. Mike, it's, okay. it's uh, just you, me, and Mark uh, sitting around the uh, dining room table here talking about stuff. You were so much fun when you were at the uh, Get Prepared Expo. And uh, you had so many people who were fascinated with uh, what you had to say. We were talking, uh, Mark and I were talking before you came on, about uh, some of the flash mobs that, uh, that are occurring all over the country and, and some of the dangerous situations. Mike, can you tell our class a little bit about, oh, some of the minor things that you've gotten into and, and how you've uh, escaped from them with... Uh, without anybody getting hurt, and then we'll get into some more serious situations? Okay. Well, the uh, first thing you have to realize is nobody really wants to be hurt. And uh, when it comes to negotiating for your life, uh, it's not like a business deal. Uh, all you have to do is uh, plant in their mind that there's a chance that things may not go right. And once you get that planted in their minds, well, then now you're on equal terms. But uh, once they they feel that they've got the advantage over you and there's nothing you can do about it, then you will be victimized. So you're saying um, put some doubt in their mind that they may not get away without harm. Is that what you're saying? That's exactly right. The only reason people do bad things is they think they can get away with it. They're going to act real nice, everything's going to be rosy red, you know, until they, they have fear for their own safety. And then that's when everything changes. Okay, so let's, let's talk about a scenario that uh, you were involved with, Mike, that um, you, you were able to just get away with uh, no harm to anybody. What, paint one of those pictures for us, please. Okay. Okay, I was going through uh, Mexico, old Mexico, and uh, it was late at night, and you never drive late at night. Uh, you shouldn't be driving anywhere late at night. In Mexico, you sure don't want to be. But uh, the situation called for it, and I got stopped. And uh, I can't tell the difference between military, police, or bandits. Uh, they're all the same to me. And uh, they were going through my vehicle, and uh, they found a flashlight. And it was one of those big old mag, mag lights. They, they turned it. It was mine. They turned it on, and, boy, everything lit up real good. Mm-hmm. And they, they thought, you know, hey, this, they like this. And so they said, confiscate. Well, they said a bunch of stuff. And then one of the words was confiscate. And uh, I just stood there with a big old grin on my face, and I just said, no gracias. And, uh, 
<laughs> no gracias. You know, they, yeah, no gracias. <laughs> and so then they, you know, they looked at each other and they think, you know, didn't I say this right? You know, I mean, they, they thought that everything was right. And so he said some more stuff and he said, confiscate again. And then but with my big old smile, I, I just said, no gracias, you know. And then uh, they turned to my traveling companion. And they told him in Spanish, he could speak Spanish, and they told him in Spanish that, you know, confiscate means that I don't have no choice, and they're just going to take it. And so, you know, uh, my, my uh, companion, he, he explained that to me. And then I just got my feathers all ruffled up, and all that nice guy, the big old smile was gone. I got real mean, real nasty, and I smacked the hood of my truck, and I said no, and a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> and then, uh, boy, everybody jumped back, and everybody was scared. And even my companion, he was terrified because he knew we were going to die. Then. <laughs> and then, uh, so then they asked my companion, well, what did I say? And then my companion told him, well, he, you know, the, he said no, and he was scared of the dark. Meaning you're scared of the dark? Yes. Okay. And everybody was real quiet. They looked at each other. And then they started laughing, and then they gave me back the flashlight, and they said, loco gringo. That one was <laughs> so. Uh, so. And uh, see, that's unexpected. Mm-hmm. And uh, they knew we were outgunned, we were outnumbered. They knew they had the advantage, and they knew we had no say-so over the matter at all, except for I didn't know that. And when that came up, came up then it realized that you know, their, danger, their, their lives may be in danger. So the best thing is just don't worry about it. Let it go on. So, Mike, why why did they let this let this go? I mean, they, as you said, you were outnumbered, outgunned. They wanted your flashlight. It was maybe a twenty dollar U.S. Um, item. And uh, did they think you were crazy and that it, you'd start swinging, or what? What what did they think? That's what I was talking about. It puts doubt, puts doubt in their mind. Who is this guy? What's going on with him? Why is he not scared? And that's that, that little seed of doubt that makes them think that, you know, maybe things aren't as perfect as they think it is, and they just leave it at that. That's when I, when, that's when I don't know how to talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. When I can talk to people, well, then I, I, I say other things, you know, but these people didn't understand what I was saying. You still there? <laughs> I, think, I, think, I think we lost him. <laughs> Okay. No, there he is. There uh, he is. Uh, Mike, no, there, I'm here. there's a little bit of rattling and tapping going on in the background. I don't know what you can do about that, but if, if you can figure that out, that'd be great. So, Mike, that, that was a great, a great story. So you just, you just implanted that doubt in their mind. Let's take this to the next level. Is there another um, scenario that was a little bit more uh, tenuous? Oh, uh, well, uh, I, I think. Uh, Mark, you were there when I did my seminar, and um, uh, Vincent, uh, I asked Vincent later on when I was able, and I was going to tell a story, and I had you okay, and uh, what it was, well, it was a whale, and uh, at that time, it was, uh, I was out late at night, and uh, uh, at that time, they were having a change of government, this was back in 2001. And uh, they were under mall, and three uh, in the daytime. At night, the, the bandits and uh, gangs run the streets, and they, they run everything. I was on the streets, and uh, they started, I heard them, and uh, it was just like you see in the movies. All the, It was downtown at Crocus, and uh, all the stores were, uh, had the like, garage door down on them. No place to go. And uh, I was there or coming around, and uh, I got scared. Uh, like I say there was maybe a hundred of them. And, uh, I, you know, what are you going to do? Fight or, or, you know, what? I can't speak. And so when you I said, went into... Uh, M- Mike? And uh, What's that? Mike, now let me make sure yes. that, that we heard you correctly, because we're uh, breaking up a little bit with this uh connection from thousands of miles away. You were in downtown Caracas, Venezuela, and there was a gang of about 100 people. Is that correct? 
Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. And and the other thing is, you're saying that you do not speak the native language, so you're you're just speaking English. Is that correct? Yes. Sir. Okay. Go ahead. Hey, I was I was scared. I didn't know. You know, I can hold my own in a fight against you know a couple, two or three, but. You know, that many, I didn't even, you know, I'd get tired before I got done with them. So, I, uh, but I, but I, I did have another plan and I went into, uh, um, uh, a series of coughing, uh, very bad coughing. It was real serious. And, uh, like I did at the show, I was real loud, uh, I back any, and, uh, I, I this what? And when I coughed up this light, you know, they all looked at me because nobody, you know, they're superstitious. That's the first thing. So, and then with the coughing, uh, it could be tuberculosis. So, you know, nobody really wanted much of me. <laughs> and then after I, I light, I looked at it, held it up so everybody could see it, and get everybody to calm down. And then I uh, put it in one ear and, you know, shook my head and went crazy <laughs> and yelled and screamed and, and uh, brought it out the other side, and, you know, I went through a whole routine. And, uh, I mean, by the time I got done, they were all terrified. <laughs> and then uh, all I did was held it up and then walked. They just parted like the, like the sea. You know, they just parted, and I just walked right on through. And, uh, you know, everything was rosy red after that. But, uh, Mike, let me... I say there's ways to scare people. And that's what you do. You just have to let them know that they don't have the advantage, and then things will calm down. <laughs> well, Mike, those are some interesting stories. I We have to take a brief bottom-of-the-hour break, and uh, we'll come back and hear more about that and also some of your, uh, your expertise in training SWAT teams and various other uh, groups and individuals. And uh, we're looking forward to you coming to the Get Prepared Expo in the fall. But we're going to take this brief bottom of the hour break and we'll be right back on USA 